Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Tony with rchelp.com. Today, we're back on the T-Max and, oh yeah, we're gonna get that engine installed in this thing. Uh, we do have to do a few things first. Number one, we we've gotta get rid of this metal spur gear. Number two, we've gotta take this chowdered up clutch bell off of here. And number three, we gotta put on a brand new fuel tank because if you remember the last one, it didn't have a spring. And quite honestly, I don't want it to open up on me when I'm, you know, having fun with it. So with that in mind, first thing we got to do is get this spur gear off. And we're going to go ahead and put a brand new spur gear on with brand new pegs for the slipper. So should be able to just back that off with my finger. You shouldn't be able to do that, but yeah, you can with this one. So we'll take those off. All right, let's go ahead and slide this thing off. Now I am running a different camera. Uh, I'm actually using my SJ cam, which is like a GoPro knockoff. <laughs> We're gonna see how that works out uh, because my other one is giving me uh, interlacing problems and it's just, it's weird. So we will be reusing this piece and this. None of this, we're not reusing the pegs or the spur gear. All right, now we're gonna slide that forward because we need to remove that bearing right there. We're going to set that bearing there because the other spur gear comes with a bushing and I want to see if I can use the bearing over a bushing. Speaking of the spur gear, here we go. Three bucks, man. Three dollars for a spur gear. But if you're running a metal spur, you're chowdering up a $12 clutch bell. So I would rather destroy a $3 spur gear. Now, the unfortunate thing is because I'm having to replace this, I do have to put in brand new pegs. Eh. The pegs cost more than the freaking spur gear. Now I have opened this one because I was going to install this on a previous video. Nah, that never happened. So let's go ahead and dump those pegs out. Grab this. Grab the good trusty pocket knife. And yeah, sharpen that doll thing. Holy crap and dump that out as you can see we have our spur gear beautiful for those of y'all wondering i went with a 70 tooth instead of a 72 and as i said there's the bushing this bushing locks onto that shaft which is why i'd rather use a bearing so let's see if this bearing fits in here it wants to it's going to be a pretty tight fit if it does go yeah, I'd have to waller that out. See how that bushing fits. Yeah, see how bushing fits in there. A little bit better. It spins, but it's not like extremely tight. All right, now we get to put in all 12 of these little pegs. Her looking all over for that last little pig and it decided to stay in the package these things are an absolute pain man but they're in <laughs> all right let's get this back over here hopefully i'm keeping this all in frame for you guys because i can't it, you guys are on the camera i can't see the top of the camera all right, which side of that are we going? Oh God, where'd you go? All right, we're gonna use this side here. Uh, this is the side that hasn't been used yet. All right, so we're gonna slide that on there. We're gonna grab our spur gear. Yeah, I just tried this once and failed. Make sure all my little pegs are still in there. Slide that on. That will hold that ring on now we get the fun part of trying to get this one on which is definitely easier said than done so get that clocked in there now we're going to tilt this up and i'm absolutely not sure if you guys can even see this because now i've got to find that little groove 
don't know what a groove is. Oh, <laughs> I got lucky. That never happens. Go ahead, slide our spring on. Slide the little nut on. Grab our needle nose, those reasons. See, even right there, that just that feels like it's slipping too much. We're gonna leave it there and see what it does because if that won't grab right there, we're gonna have some problems. Well, that thing is just weevil wobbling all over the place. Oh, wow. Uh, that spur gear actually moves back and forth on those pegs. Huh. <laughs> that may or may not be good. But yeah, see I can... It's All it's doing right now is spinning the uh, spur gear. So that is wicked loose. Okay, well, hey, we'll give it a shot. This is what, this is what Traxxas says to use. So go ahead and put that bearing into the old spur gear slide it out of the way now we get to work on this guy first thing i'm going to do is pull the muffler off of it give me a little bit more room and we're going to grab flat bladed screwdriver go ahead and pop that e-clip off pull that off i decided to just say to heck with it and go ahead and run the clutch that was in there even though it's missing some pieces if it comes apart that's my bad but I want to see if it'll run with that clutch. All right, so we'll grab our $12 clutch bell. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's get that one out of the way. We're getting a new Eclipse, so we don't need that one. And the other thing is we're going up on the tooth count. So we're going to get a little bit more top speed, especially with that spur gear. So one of the differences between this and this one is this one is the only one with this size bearing in it go figure so you have to dump another six bucks for these bearings but these bearings are cheaper than the other bearings which are smaller so yeah figure that one out all right grab a knife cut through that grab our two bearings gimme 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 we'll go ahead and pop them bearings in there there we go Go ahead and pop this bearing in there. All right, there we go. Now, we can slide the clutch bell onto the engine. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking down where that E-clip goes. And I want to see how much play this thing's going to have. And I don't think it's going to have much, if any at all. So, we're going to do a little test here. It comes with two of these shims. I'm going to take one of the shims and put it on the inside. Check the fitment. Nope, that makes it... Well... Now nah, that lines it up flush, which you don't want. So what I was hoping for was... To put one on the inside that way it would ride on the inner race on the inner bearing and because this one yeah it's really close to that clutch so yeah we'll just slide it on put one of the little spacers on there then i'll look down it again and make sure i can get my e-clip on comes with two e-clips too i thought they only come with one may have just got lucky I need a little bit of luck on this truck. All right, grab our needle nose. Go ahead and pop that sucker on there. Make sure it's seated. All right, make sure it spins. It does spin. These are new bearings. They got oil in them. It's not contacting the flywheel, but man, is it close. All right. So now, I'll go ahead and get the E-clip and the other spacer out of the way. Now we can get these bolts out of here. Alright, now that we got all the bolts out of there, we can go ahead and set the engine on the frame. 
Grab our bolt. Grab our Allen driver. You like them? And then just start them. See if I can get that up in there. Alright, it just started to go snug. I'm going to back it off that way I can still move this engine around. Grab our second bolt. Go ahead and flip it up. Get it in there. Grab our third bolt. Get it in there. And again, for anybody watching it may have just stumbled upon this video these are a little bit more in-depth so I do leave a lot more content in these than I normally would but I did it out of request I had members that wanted to see more of what I do whenever I rebuild these trucks so you guys get to see it <laughs> all right so now that I've completely screwed up my towel get the Allen driver out the way what we're going to do is we're going to set this gear mesh, but before I do that, I have got to try to get that spur gear somewhat straight. Now, one of the benefits to a metal spur versus the plastic spurs, the metal spur is going to be just a little more round. <laughs> yeah, so the way I do this, that engine should move. <laughs> I must have got one a little too tight. Go ahead and back them off. Back them off. Back them off. Oh, there it is. So what we want to do is move this engine in and out, but you don't want to kind of cock it to the side like this. Just move it in and out. Hold your clutch bell with your thumb and check the rock. And then move it. Check it. Move it. Check it. Move it. Check it. And you want to check it all the way around like I said these are not always round and you want to absolutely check that you're getting the proper gear mesh all the way around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it just like that and we're just going to go just lightly snug on two of them kind of a crisscross pattern lightly snug I can already tell you that is way too tight so we're just going to wiggle this back and forth until we get the perfect gear mesh all the way around that feels really good right there see how loose it is right there but how tight it is right there yeah it's pretty tight there too all right I like that so we'll go ahead tighten those two down and then check the gear mesh again all right that feels really really good just a slight amount of play right there Still spins nice and free. Excellent. Now, time for a little Loctite. Thread locker, actually, but this is Loctite brand 242, as you can see. As always, give it a little bit of a shake. Pull the cap off. Now, we're gonna pull out one of them that we did not tighten down. Grab our thread locker. Whoa, that came out way too fast. <laughs> Made a mess. You saw me wipe it off of the threads. That so it, you don't need a lot of this stuff. You wipe it off the threads and it'll give you just the perfect amount down in them threads for when you screw it up in there. All right, got that one tightened down. We're gonna take out this one that we have already tightened. since I've got a crap ton on there and I got a bunch on my finger 
There we go. Tighten that one down. This one here that I'm taking out now, I have not tightened. Go ahead and roll a little bit of thread locker on it. Smooth it out. And send it to its final resting place. Sort of. You know we're taking this engine back out at some point. <laughs> Tighten it down. Whoa. Get back in there. Take this last one out. Roll it. A little bit of thread locker. Perfect. Tighten it down. All right. So, got a little paper towel. We're going to clean up our mess right there. Always put your cap back on because that stuff's wicked expensive. And now that we've done all that work, check it. Yeah, I went back because it, it almost felt a little bit too tight. A good way to tell if it's too tight, spin it. If it's too tight, one, you'll hear it as you're spinning it, uh, getting really tight and kind of grinding together. And two, it won't spin free. But that right there, that actually may be a little bit too loose in some spots, which worries me. But like right there is absolutely perfect. Yeah, we'll run with it. <laughs> all right now putting this thing back together i am not putting this back on it this i mean it gives you a good carry handle but i put the rear bumper on it i have a good carry handle so we'll set that one over there but we do need the bolt that was holding that down because that bolt went into there so we'll grab our muffler slide it on there i don't have any zip ties on here yet so i know i know Slide it on there a little bit more. Now this right here is actually a coat hanger. <laughs> don't ask. I don't know. So we're going to kind of manipulate this thing into place. Mm, I don't like it. I should have got a new bracket for this. But hey, run what you brown. I'm going to need a different Allen driver. Oh, no. So I'm going to need a different Allen driver. We'll go with the 2 millimeter variety. Flip that up. Get my nylock nut that the nylon is probably wore out on. Actually, no. Well, I got kind of tight. That is some good news. This thing should have a washer on it. It doesn't. We'll see how she tightens down. Get my Allen driver. That, uh, yeah, it's a little bit too high. I'll go ahead and lower, lower this down just by bending that wire a little bit. It does need to go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it right here, kind of give it a bend. See if I can't get this thing to push in. Something like that. Make sure it's not contacting the flywheel or anything, which you guys can see better than I can. Go ahead, snug this bolt up. Okay. That has no resistance on it. <laughs> ah. Anyway, the engine and muffler is installed. Coffee break. <laughs> All right. Let's kind of scoot this back out the way a little bit because we got to bring in this catastrophe. <laughs> ah, yeah, buddy. Now I'm going to grab a Phillips screwdriver because we need the screws. So these are some screws that, well, 
we didn't clean yet hence why I moved the truck out of the way and if I could keep a hold of this screwdriver that would be fantastic but I can't get a screwdriver in that all right we'll break up the little bitty pokey bit and then we're gonna break out that thread locker pretty sure you guys remember get this freaking screw cleaned out here to where I can get this in there all right and this catastrophe is no more that mm -mm. <laughs> yeah so now we need to get our red rag grab our screw and we're going to try to clean this thing all right once we got the top side clean kind of clean the threads off a little bit looks gooder enough to me all right with all four of them screws cleaned now we can install this little jewel fourteen dollars <laughs> they do sell a rebuild kit uh for the littleness however it comes with everything but the piece i need which is the tank so yeah basically on the old one right here where this bolt goes through uh it broke right there so you definitely man that is no wonder it broke that's a hell of a spring but <laughs> it closes no worry about that so i'm gonna set them right there we are going to set the tank just like so we're going to grab a screw we're i'm going to kind of hold it with my finger kind of tilt this up and now we get to locate one of them legs all right find one of the holes in the leg go ahead and screw it in do not over tighten these they are going into plastic once you feel it stop stop grab another screw line the tank up Make sure your screw's straight when you're putting it in. Tighten her on down. It stops. Stop. I don't know why I just put my screwdriver down right there. I am nowhere near done. And stop. Fourth and final screw. and stop well <laughs> what do you guys think I find it amazing that they don't put filters in these tanks anymore they used to and it saddens me that they don't do that anymore so some of you guys that have done this before have probably picked up on the fact that I put this tank on but I don't have the fuel line sitting on here and yes I, that is kind of a oversight that I made but I think I can still put it in there so secret tool secret weapon good pair of uh, one of those tweezers brand new fuel line this stuff is cheap guys no need to be putting used fuel line on these things I got I think five feet of this stuff here I've, I've got a bunch So we're gonna see if I can get this on here. Because if I can, if I can, oh my god, this is worse than working with spaghetti. If I can put this on here, then I know other people can too. And I can tell people they don't need to remove their tank. And would you look at that? That fast I got it on there. However, we're going to go ahead and take it off. And I'm going to take this tank back out. <laughs> because there's one thing that I want to do. And there's no way I will be able 
to put that fuel line on. Like I said, if I make a mistake, I'm going to show you guys, and this is one of the mistakes that I have made on this truck. One of quite a few. I ain't going to tell you guys a number. All right, pull that out. And the reason I'm doing this, yes, I can get that on, but I want to do something to this fuel line that will make it less likely to come off. So let's see how good these cutters are on these pliers. That is not bad. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to stick out. No. Oh, that might be three sixteenths of an inch. Four to five mil maybe. We're going to go ahead and cut that off. Now. We're going to take us some good long needle nose pliers. We're going to put it in there and we're going to stretch that bad boy out. It's a silicone, so it's going to go back into shape. And then we're going to feed this fuel line through there, pull that off. And what you're left with, ooh, them pliers were not clean. I'm going to have to redo this. But what you're left with is basically a clamp that's going to clamp this down and on something like this fitting here you put that onto here and that line ain't never coming off it'll probably break before it comes off and i've got to clean them pliers because that was oh my god that was bad brand new fuel line and i leave a big old black stain on it mm -mm, can't have it all right let's try that once again for the second time this time with the correct piece i don't know why i grabbed this smaller piece i want this bigger piece so, oh, left a little schmoo on there. Go ahead and spread that apart. Slide that on there. Pull it off. And there we go. That, once we put it on here, uh, very, very unlikely to come off. Especially on a smooth fitting like this. You need all the holding power you can get. And I'm sitting here looking, like right through here and it is just right at the same level so you're not going to get you know any forces on this that are going to push it up and possibly break that little nipple so now that that's on we can install a fuel tank once again for the second time all right so got the screw up in there grab a fuel tank lined up since i've already put threads in it Try to go into the exact same threads that we used before. Put our second screw in there. I am I have absolutely no clue how much of this you guys can see. I apologize. Trying a new camera because my camera is old. Does anybody have a decent camera they want to get rid of? It doesn't have to be expensive. It just needs to be decent. 1080 30 that's all i need right now i'm shooting this at 1080 60 but i don't need 60 frames a second it's just nice to have all right final screw there we go so now you want to think about fuel line routing and straightening up your towel and taking a coffee break now this fuel line comes in right here uh you can just take it and run just like this well not with that in the way but you can just run it up in there like that however when these things flip over you're no longer getting fuel from this tank it's not like a helicopter or an airplane that has a clunk inside that'll keep the clunk into the fuel to where it can still pick it up no these you're only getting what's in that line and the only reason it's still in the line is because of capillary action won't let it fall back in the tank so what we're going to do is just kind of look and see how much space we have because like i did in the last video uh series <laughs> uh i'm going to put a loop in this except this time i'm not taking it out so we'll bring it up bring it down over this one is going to have to go on the other side of that pull starter okay so we've got a nice loop in there. Let's make it a little bit tighter. 
and then we're going to bring that around and we'll cut it right there grab our pliers go ahead cut it so what that's going to do is it's going to give us this much fuel in this line to get to that truck and get it flipped over and if you can get it kind of tucked in here real good you'll never even notice it again get the fuzzy off grab our pliers 3 16 3 4 5 mil maybe cut it off I didn't cut all the way through that time good enough grab our pliers stick it on there fuel line spread it shove it on in there pull it off make sure that it's sticking out of the end the main line is sticking out of the end right here kind of tuck it down in there a little bit and I'm going to use the needle nose to help me put this on there don't squeeze the fuel tubing too hard because you can put a hole in it or let it slip like that because you can also put a hole in it <laughs> and what I noticed and then just kind of work it up on there and that line that line ain't gonna come off I don't care what you're doing that line ain't coming off but this loop is pretty big so I'm gonna run the pull start through it that way I can tuck that down in there and then what we'll do is we'll just zip tie this in place you can still get to the pull start it doesn't interfere with it we can try to kind of pull it over away from the engine but nah. That fuel is going to be going through here fast enough. It ain't going to hurt it. So now we need to do the pressure line from here over to the tank. Again, do not use old fuel line for this. This stuff is wicked cheap. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push it on. Come over here. And on this one as well, I'm going to run a loop. And the only reason I run a loop on the pressure line is to keep the pulses out of the fuel tank. So we're going to run it back just like that. Then we're going to take, come up and over, kind of tuck it down in there, and we'll go ahead and cut it right there. Again, cut off a few millimeters. There's one and two, uh, two. Grab our needle nose, grab our fuel line, spread her on apart. Alright, that looks good. So this one, oh, how do I want to run this? We'll go in between. It's almost like making a roller coaster in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Let's slide that on. And with that little ring around it, that ain't coming off. Go ahead and put our second one on here. Pull it off the muffler. See, it's already hard to get off the muffler. You put these on, and it'll be almost impossible without cutting it or tearing it. All right. That looks good. Slide it on there. Push it down. And she is home. And again, we do need to do some wire management, or in this case, tubing management. <laughs> I'll zip tie it up underneath here, and yeah, we'll make it all kinds of purdy. And just as the icing on the cake, there we go. So, we got the engine installed, mufflers installed, got the fuel tank installed, and we have it plumbed in. This thing is... <laughs> It's getting so close in the next video we're going to install all the electronics and get the linkages hooked up and everything and from there program it put fuel in it have fun with it
<laughs> I cannot wait. I am not going to be running the original transmitter. I'm going to run my DX3R. Kind of old, still works. So we're going to wire all that up in the next video. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Speaking of liking the video, let me know what you think about this camera. Let me know what you think about the audio. Is I'm trying something new on this one here. So let me know what you guys think about it. Be sure to post them down in the comments below. Again, as always, questions, comments, suggestions, you can post them down there as well. I love getting comments from you guys, and I try to respond to every single one of them. I don't think there's very many that I've actually missed. So be sure to comment down below, and uh, yeah, let's chat it up. Don't forget to come over to the forum, sign up over there. A bunch of great, friendly people. And as always, I want to thank everyone for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.